Welcome to the Epic Man Podcast, where we let our curiosities and theories run wild and sometimes talk relevant news. I'm Josiah, and with me, my two friends and co-hosts, Ben and Mike. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing. I'm doing really well. Yeah? yeah? Like, really, yeah. really well? Well, I'm super pumped because there's this new MMO coming out called okay, New World Mike. on Amazon. Oh my gosh, Dude. I've heard so much about yes, that. Yes, I'm so glad that you brought this up. I am pumped. This thing so was freaking pumped. Fire. Yeah. I'm all, I hear it's I'm kind all... of like a blend of like The Witcher and I don't remember what the other part. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are so bad. Listen, I don't want to hear it now. How do you like it when you have a topic you want to bring up and then somebody else just snatches it out of the way before you get a chance to bring it up? I wasn't going to bring it up. Well, you bring up other stuff. <laughs> did you know that wolves are pack animals, Michael? I don't know. Did you know that, Michael? So, did you know I'm that wolves really are well. in packs? <laughs> did you know that they travel in packs? They're not. They don't usually travel alone. Basically, you know that wolves is, howl. Moral of the story is Mike's doing well. I'm doing really well. Yeah, good. I'm um, really, really happy to hear that. Yeah. yeah How are I'm, you doing, Ben? I'm doing good. Yeah. Yeah. You hanging in there? Yeah. yeah. I'm happy that tomorrow we have. A potentially sunny day mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. we're going to be able to do some stuff for yeah, we're yeah. Be shooting for hopefully, our epic you know, man hopeful channel. fans out yeah. there yeah make yeah. sure you go check out our main channel epic man if you haven't yet and uh subscribe over there we have yeah. a lot of spicy videos over there so Always. spicy content where you get to see more of our faces yeah so, well, i'm sure we wouldn't so want more of that right <laughs> i'm not yeah. sure that's a selling point but <laughs> hey, 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 you know. it is what it is yeah <laughs> well, oh man yeah so listen Guys, yeah, I have, I have a question. It's really okay. a good question. Is it about okay. the penis rocket? The How do you yesterday? guys? Well, we'll get to that too. Yes, penis <laughs> rocket. You know what? Let's, Let's talk about the penis rocket right now. <laughs> Jeff Bezos' dick rocket. Yeah, bro, Broad what civilian. was he thinking? Somebody designed that thing, dude. Not only that, but like it, this was the they sent the first civilians to space ever in a penis rocket. Yeah, I kind of love that. So you could say it's a baller move. You know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh. So I don't know, but whoever designed that was kind of a dick. If you guys didn't oh. wow. if you guys didn't know um what, what what happened, Jeff Bezos, Mr. Amazon himself, decided to go into space. Lex Luther. Yeah. Yes, literally. He blasted himself in the lower literally reaches of outer like space on Tuesday. Night. Um and it's kind of a big deal Alexa. because turn off. Sorry, my Alexa, Alexa was like, going crazy. Well, actually, that rocket wasn't a penis. So let me tell you. Probably because you <laughs> mentioned her Alexa, master's name. Turn yeah. off. She's like, you talking about Jeffrey okay. Bezos? Go ahead, Mike. You talking Sorry. about Jeff Bezos? <laughs> no, so, yeah, apparently, like, Jeff Bezos wanted to go into space and wanted to do his thing and be all excited and bring people up into space, and it's a big deal. But his rocket looks like a straight-up penis. Like, yeah. literally. Yeah. <laughs> literally. And so somebody asked... Uh, uh engineer a rocket scientist why it looked like a penis um and this guy's name is daniel ramshbacker i'm okay. just gonna say that's i'm sorry if you're listening to this and i got your name really right. likes to ram things i'm sure yeah well for, <laughs> i'm sorry to say if you listen to this Jesus. imagine him being, being named ramshbacker and talking about a penis-sized rocket um or a penis-shaped rocket well for lots of reasons honestly i mean obviously most rockets are quite phallic this one specifically, they took the approach of pretty much all the commercial space programs where they go suborbital. So they don't go fully into orbit, similar to what we as, as NASA back in the 60s. So the rocket's relatively small. Everything in our industry is more or less based on heritage. It's like, well, what, will we, what have we used in the past? What can we leverage? How can we reduce risk or co reduce cost? Mm. Um, but my thing is he, not, he doesn't really answer why it's shaped like a rocket. You mean I'm penis? sorry, but I've never thought that rockets looked like penises until yesterday. Me yeah. either, dude. And I, well, and that's the thing is like, I was like, that doesn't look like any other rocket I've seen. But... <laughs> so they reduced the girth of the shaft, kept the capsule at the top yeah. the same size, which gave it a dis that distinct shape. Dude, and I've watched so many rocket launches from like uh, SpaceX and stuff, and none of them ever looked like that. No. So Rocket with its throbbing basically head. what i'm seeing so what i'm getting from this is that <laughs> jeff bezos really likes penises and he had to show the entire world and that was I mean, his statement he was just like hey this yeah. is this, Listen, is this was his declaration yeah yep. 
I'm going into space. I'm. I I'm, love penis. I am. <laughs> I am banging love. space right now, yep. dude. I watched an interview with him right before he like got in that rocket, or it was either right afterwards or right before or whatever. He laughs and talks like a supervillain. It's one of the scariest. He literally things. does, dude. Yep. The yeah. dude is a supervillain. He's ripped straight out of a comic book. Yeah, he really, he really, really seems that way. It's so weird. He's, yeah. got, he's a billion. He's a multi-billionaire. There's a video yeah. of him walking through the Amazon like warehouse too. He's just like walking through <laughs> and he's like waving at people and like apparently um somebody in that they're like they were in that warehouse when he came through and nobody knew who he was. He just looked like some guy in a suit and they're like why is this guy walking around in here what's going on <laughs> not knowing that he like owned the place that's so funny wow yeah, that it was pretty great but yeah I, i'm so, not gonna i mean i'm not gonna be happy if we don't get like a superhero human like all-out fight someday between elon musk and jeff bezos dude my mind is on elon and everything my mind is on elon well if it comes if it gets to hand to hand i think bezos has a has a I agree, well, but Elon will beat him with brains far before his brawn beats Elon. That's fair. True. You think Elon Musk is smarter than Jeff Bezos? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Not saying Jeff Bezos be, isn't smart either, but no, dude's a great businessman. But you don't have to be super intelligent to have a lot of money. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's I said that's... super intelligent. Because <laughs> there's a lot of super intelligent people that didn't have a lot of money. Yeah. So yeah, that's true. You know. Yep. They're not they're not mutually exclusive. Yeah. yeah. So. Mm-hmm. I I agree. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Freaking Elon Musk. Elon. Can you just imagine Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos just like duking it out and like do Elon Musk suits? is gonna build like a Superman suit or a super <laughs> Iron Man suit <laughs> yeah. and he's just gonna dude it literally be like right out of Iron Man. <laughs> Elon Musk will build the original Iron Man suit, and then yeah. he, then Jeff Bezos will steal it. He'll build a big Iron Man suit, and then he'll fight Elon Musk in his new reform, refined Iron Man suit. Wasn't the, the wasn't Man I, I don't remember his name. What's the name of the 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 villain in the first uh, Iron Man movie? Wasn't uh, he bald too? Yeah, hey, that's yeah. What I'm saying. Obadiah, Obadiah, like, Obadiah, Obadiah, that's it. Yeah, I want to say Ichabod, but I knew happen. that wasn't right. <laughs> literally, what's gonna happen? Obadiah. And it'd be amazing, and I would be here for it, especially <laughs> yes. if it was nationally broadcast. Yes. <laughs> oh, We're already man. a joke to the aliens. We might as well just make ourselves more of a joke at this point. Yeah, I agree. You know? Yeah. <laughs> just like. Oh, is that is that where your people decided to start calling us jokes? Yeah, a joke. Yeah, or that's like your, yeah. Earth is just one big one big joke <laughs> one one big joke just floating in space <laughs> <laughs> and just behind earth it's just this little it quotate like bubble that says lol it's a big big joke yeah. amazing you guys are out yeah. control. man so. i kind of feel like we've had this conversation before that's kind of weird wow it's like deja vu it's almost like deja vu like, what the heck i just said that and you just said that it's like deja vu well, say deja vu deja vu so what's weird about that is if you've seen the movie The Matrix, which Ben hasn't. I've seen what? it. We're going to leave that hanging it. in the air for a moment. We're going to put a pin in that. Ben has not seen The Matrix, and he dares call himself a nerd. Um, but if you've seen Oof. The Matrix, you know that deja vu happens when yeah. you change something in the code. Boom. Yeah. But if we're seeing deja vu as well, did that mean that we're in The Matrix? Does that mean that? We live in a simulation. We hmm. live in a society, but do we live in a simulation? Do we live in a simulated society? Do we live that's in deep. a simulated well, society that's part of a simulated Do we society? live in a simulated society that's been simulated by another society? This is getting out of control. Do we live in a simulated society that's been simulated by another society simulation of that society. Do we live in a society that's been stimulated <laughs> by another simulation? Stim- <laughs> by another society. Oh, you know what? At, oh my goodness! At this point, I'm lost. Ben, what do you think about deja vu? I don't know. Man. Does it freak I, you out? In in some ways, yes. Yeah. My my all my my theory of deja vu is that. Oh, okay. Here Not only a simulation. That's that's a good theory. I like that one. But my theory is that humans <clears throat> have the ability of foresight naturally. Foreskin. Really? Foresight. 
that we can that we've seen things but we don't remember that we've seen those things and then when we come across it in our like regular timeline we're like hold on a second i feel like i've seen that it's almost like foresight but amnesia at the same time if that makes any sense we've seen things but we forget that we've seen those things because we're not supposed to know we've seen those things hmm because like what if we've seen those things and we knew we saw those things and that messed up like our entire like time structure or something you keep saying things what do you mean things ben i don't know like, just life we've seen things that have happened in life we've seen conversations like things, or people are we seeing or things before or... it happens yeah yeah ah. that's what called that's what foresight is michael well i i know how do you remember been, it but you just you... kept saying saying things well that's what i mean it's it's almost like the the event happening triggers that memory from the the like recesses of your brain it like it like triggers that it like it like breaks up that. So how does um, foresight work, Ben? I'm pretty in sure the human foresight brain. is just you know when you see something that's going to happen, and that's it. You see something that's going to happen, and then it happens. Hmm. I would say that's foresight. If you see something that's going to happen, then it does happen. You technically have foreseen that it is going to happen. Right. It's like think about like if there's any validity to Sears. Or things like that, right? You know, like visions or seers. Yeah, seers. S e e r. Like the store. Seers. No s. You know what? Never mind. (laughs) Is seers real? (laughs) Is it part of the simulation? (laughs) Dude, seers is part of the simulation. That's why it's not here anymore. (laughs) No seers. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any validity to seers? Yeah. Is there any validity Mm -hmm. to like seers and things like that? You know, like uh, and and like they have these... like kind of like trained themselves to be able to master to, Yeah, like what if they were able to master the foresight that they have that master people, the foreskin that people can Shmegma. like normal people consider deja vu and they've been yeah. able to master that. They've been able to harness those those abilities and see into the future and and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm yeah, just, it's an interesting theory. Obviously, I don't know how much validity there is to any of it, but it's interesting. It's always something that's like sat in my brain. I'm like. Why do I feel like I know these things have happened? You know, like, why do I feel like I've been here before? Um, So how do you see something before it happens? Like, I don't know. That's that's my question. Because I'm asking time isn't necessarily like a thing construct. Yeah. Yeah. But is that technically part of time or is it just part of existence? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah, I like that. Existence. You're foreseeing existence. Yeah, you're forcing something that happens in your existence. I mean, we existed before time ever was created, per se. Like, time as a like a way to tell how the seasons pass and how the Earth rotates around the sun or whatever have you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, human beings existed before time was called time. A construct or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Before we made it into a construct or whatever. Right, before we made it a construct, right? You know, like, yeah, yeah the we we age and like the earth rotates around the sun, et cetera, et cetera. But we came up with a name for that and we called it time. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know who, I don't know who came up with that idea, but it was more of just like calling something that already exists. Some, you know, uh, by a name. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's always been my, so that's your theory theory for deja vu. That's my theory for foresight. Foresight. Interesting. Foreskin. The schmegma of, sure of time. <laughs> oh no. Um, yeah, interesting. I've been having a lot more deja vu recently for some reason. And like, you know, I think I think humans naturally are capable of things that we don't realize we're capable of. Like what else, Ben? I like how Ben just cool story, you know? Like I've been having a lot of deja vu recently, and he's like, "No, no, that's I, that let's was talk just, about other that people." The, that was the end of, I have no validity. I can see no, that. That that's was fine. the no end validity. of my. That was okay. That was the end of my thought, but I never got to finish that. So anyway, continue. Now. So you've no, been I'm, having I'm, a lot of foresight. Yeah, no, 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 lots no, of foresight. Your thoughts are stupid, Josiah. Stop. Sorry, you've been having a lot of <laughs> deja, deja vu. Yeah, tell us about your deja vu. When was, I don't when, know. when was the last time you remember having deja vu? Uh, it literally happened like a few days ago. Ooh. Yeah. Um, Real recent. What was it? What what triggered it? Uh, it was it wasn't anything like major. It was just like a casual like conversation or something that that I was having. And then I had it once when you guys were over last week too. Mm-hmm. You didn't tell us about it. 
You just didn't freaking no. bring it up right there. Because it's just like a it was just like a small thing that just happened, and I was like, oh, there's deja vu doing a and song. That's again. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's like, what if you've seen this happen and you already subconsciously know that it already happened? But isn't that just such a weird feeling? It's like it is, it's scary. It's like I I remember this happening. Yeah. Like this exact moment right here happening. Like, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. what's so scary to me is it's, it feels so real. Like you've yeah. already like seen it before. Mm -hmm. And that's why that's when like when I originally like thought of like maybe this is like this ability of like foreseeing things is like how is it feel so like real like I've already seen it before. Like, mm -hmm. you know, unless it's just like, I mean, mm -hmm. scientifically, it could just be like some sort of chemical thing in the brain. You yeah. know, like it, it, that's realistically, it could be something like that. But, you know, I always like to think a little bit like crazier when it comes to stuff like that. I'm like, what if it was something more than that? Because like, can yeah. has scientists yeah. ever really tried to explain deja vu? Oh, yeah, I'm sure they've tried to do all sorts I mean, of research. I mean, I'm sure that, they've and... tried, but like, have they ever really succeeded in coming up with a true thesis about like what deja vu is? Um, I don't think they have, I don't think they have like a, like a concrete I think, I mean, I think it's all just theories still. Right. It's all yeah. theorizing. So yeah. it's it's something that we don't quite understand. And I think that's partially because we don't understand everything that there is to understand about human beings. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, yeah. I, have, I have a, I'm going to be the counterpoint here. Okay. I'm going to make right. everybody real sad. Okay. You know, what? because I'm normally, listen, normally Ben's like the well actually guy. Well, I kind of want to be the well actually guy because <laughs> I like deja vu. I, I dig it. I do think that it could potentially be us perceiving time and space and the world around us differently. Or it could just be, so there's this thing about, um, a thing about our memory is that we can often craft fake memories. Like, mm -hmm. and so what happens is it could be something where like, Maybe our brain is is processing differently. Maybe we were like, maybe we were distracted or something, and so then all of a sudden, in this moment that you're in, you're like, oh, weird! I swear this moment's happened before because your brain is remembering something else that's familiar. Yeah. The thing is like, so there's this like, um, my friend has brought this up, who's a who works in like the psychology field, and that like, there's a staggering number of people that that all have the same memory. They remember getting lost in a department store like they're they got like separated from their parents in a department store mm -hmm. and they all distinctly remember getting lost and trying to find their parents and then a, an older gentleman like a security guard coming and finding them and, and guiding them to their parents and you said they all have these memories right like all there's like a ton of people that have mm -hmm. it. it's like a super familiar memory and okay. like a ton of people have it a ton of people like go like yeah i actually remember that or oh my gosh the same thing happened to me but it's like a consistent thing that w our minds can convince us that things are real that aren't real or like you know if you um it's like why gaslighting can be a thing like you could literally like try to explain keep explaining to somebody or keep the influence of like this thing never happened the way that you thought it did and then what will happen because of the way that our minds work I mean memory works is that short-term memory is like really pliable yeah and you can actually like turn short-term memories like change the perspective of it so like let's say you were driving in a car and like you got in a car accident and like both cars were only going 25 miles an hour. Yeah. But, like the other person across from you was like, Oh my gosh, I was flying. I didn't realize how fast I was going to hit you. And now you're like, yeah, that guy was flying and he hit me. And now your memory's changed altered. And then when it gets stored, like finally becomes a long-term memory, you can, you're like telling people, Oh my gosh, this car was like speeding so fast. And so it's like, I, I watched the thing on that. And so I also think that deja vu on like the not interesting side of human being could be our like brains lying to us about a memory because it doesn't understand it has a, si a feeling of something similar just popped into my head mm -hmm. and so now it's trying to like say maybe what we're experiencing right now is similar you know a brain glitch yeah yeah maybe like your brain malfunctioning yeah your, your, brain's brain like, just... your brain's almost like a like a organic computer yeah exactly yeah, so, yeah. i mean and, and i think like Another, and, and not actually Mike talking about like how people have the same memory just brings me to Blade Runner. I know you hate when I bring Blade Runner, <laughs> but, but you know how like replicants have memories that are created by people and yeah. planted in mm -hmm. their brains, right? Nope. Like, I've never seen those movies. 
I'm just kidding. I'm just okay. kidding. But anyway, <laughs> like that's that when you were telling me about like people, like we were saying yeah. about like people having the same memory, that's what it reminds me of is yeah. like we've all had memories implanted, like fake memories implanted in our brain mm-hmm. um, or things like that. But I mean, I like, I, I think that that's the thing is with, with deja vu, there's like, there's no concrete explanation. So anything is viable in some ways, yeah. like unless it's like super outrageous, anything is possible because we don't understand it mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. Um, but the, yeah. the brain glitch idea is super cool too. I think, you know, uh, like, yeah, I think the brain glitch is kind of the best theory probably like, I think that kind of like falls in line kind of like with dreams in a way and stuff too, because scientists still don't fully understand how dreams work too. Yeah. But it's kind of like your brain is like coming up with subconscious these subconscious weird things and stuff. Yep. So it could be just kind of something like that where your brain's just like suddenly freaking out and you're like, Oh my gosh, I've seen this before. What the heck? You yeah. know? So it could be something like that like a kind of like a memory glitch sort of or something yeah, where like your brain almost tricks you into believing that you've yeah. seen something that's happened before exactly <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i mean your brain can trick you into a lot of things yeah like your brain is an incredibly powerful yeah. like you know system in your body i mean yeah some some dreams that you have and stuff you wake up and you feel like you were like there and you're like affected by it dude like, like that's sometimes. the crazy thing like have you ever had like a dream where you like for example one no. thing that i had happen was i had a dream a very vivid dream where i was stabbed in the chest and when i woke up i just had a horrible pain for yeah. like 15 20 seconds that yeah. just that that was consistently there and then it eventually dissipated but mm-hmm. it you felt know, super real yeah there's something really interesting i think it was the i think it was the the russians i think if i remember correctly it's been a long time since i've heard this but they were like experimenting with like different things like torture and death and stuff and they uh they like had someone tied up and blindfolded and they okay no first they they had someone watch another guy that they like sliced open and they kept on slicing him until he died Mm. and stuff they just sliced him all over his body Mm. until he just bled out and died and so then the next guy they blindfolded and they tied up in the same way as him but instead of using a knife they just used an ice cube on him and they ran the ice cube all over his body and he thought that he was getting sliced up like that other guy. And so he oh, just geez. died. He just died. Yeah. Because his brain was like, just fear. this yeah. is what's happening. Like, I know what's oh. happening because I saw what happened to the other guy. Yeah. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to die. So yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's scary. Just how yeah. power, like scary, how powerful your brain is. And if you don't have control over it, like it can just like wreck you. Yeah. In a lot of ways mm-hmm. and, and i mean a lot of ways you know as someone who's dealt with pretty severe anxiety that's that's in some ways what that does to you it mm-hmm. makes you like you 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 get to the point where you feel things that you're scared of because you are genuinely you genuinely have convinced yourself yeah yeah that you have had that you are having those problems and so mm-hmm. you feel those things and it feels extremely real and it's extremely scary yeah um mm-hmm. so like you know that it's yeah the the brain is a really terrifyingly (laughs) like powerful Uh thing it is it is but yeah yeah, so i mean the brain the brain glitch idea or theory is Mm -hmm. is i think really good because your brain tricks you a Mm -hmm. lot (laughs) yeah exactly yeah (laughs) absolutely there was uh the other theory that i've heard before is that there that could also be like um basically if the parallel universe theory is correct and real Mm -hmm. and stuff then basically like your deja vu is when like basically when two parallel universes like touch for a moment or something Mm. and so it's like two like a multiverse type sort of yeah 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 so that's the other theory that i've heard as well um but yeah that's interesting too i think all of them are all those all the ideas surrounding deja vu are super interesting yeah well it's interesting too because like so this is something that it was it's not the first time i've heard it but i thought it was really really interesting because it was one of the first times that i would heard anybody as smart as they were talking about it but uh back in 2018 uh during an interview with joe rogan um he asked elon musk what he thought about like reality as a whole and mm-hmm. elon said that um he said that if you assume any rate of improvement at all games will eventually become indistinguishable from reality he said, we're most likely in a simulation. 
And then Neil deGrasse Tyson says that it's a better than 50-50 odds that the simulation hypothesis is correct mm. and that we're actually living in a simulation right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that, that theory, because... Um, we told you guys we were going to talk about it this week. Yeah, like how it slowly just kind of. I, that was a that was a very slithery oh, little segue there. We're smooth. <laughs> we're good at this. It's been doing this for a while. Or it's like, like the reason why snake. you're the snake, Mike. Huh? It's true. A little slithery little, a little guy. Snake. Yeah. I'm a snake. <laughs> um, apparently, in 2003 is where the first like the first current simulation theory idea came from mm-hmm. by a, a Swedish philosopher. Philosopher. Um, from Oxford, who went to Oxford, his name is Nick Bostrom. He said that um, if we're if there are long lived technological civilizations in the universe, if they run content computer simulations, there must be a huge number of simulated realities complete with artificial intelligence and inhabitants who may have no idea they're living inside of a game, inhabitants like us, perhaps. Um, that these beings might imagine themselves real but have no physical form existing only within the simulation. Um, I mean, if he's Swedish, then he's probably correct. I mean, hey, you so, know. That's probably right, man. The Swedes, they're right about everything. Well, it's just, you know, it's interesting because it's like, if that's the case, I mean, you know, he said he also said that um, um that, where is it? I want to find it. I just lost my spot. Basically that if if aliens have, if computer-loving aliens truly exist, we are almost certainly living in a computer simulation. Hmm. Um, he said, so now scientists are searching for ways to put the simulation hypothesis to test um, and so they've been doing a lot of like trying to find ways of doing that like looking at like subatomic particles and things like that and looking at cosmic rays to see how they work um, but something yeah. that's interesting that I just saw an article about today actually was the scientists that are discovering that it's very possible that our universe is actually finite that there's actually like a limit to it Mm. Which then begs the question, if you have something that's like a, the universe is expanding and it's finite, what is it expanding into? Mm-hmm. Like, what is, like, because of the way our minds work, we can only perceive of a beginning and we can, like, kind of-ish perceive of, of a world with no ending, but it's hard to, like, think 10,000 years in the future what the yeah. life, life will look like. Yeah. But imagine, like, if our universe is finite, is that the end of the simulation? Oh, snap. Is yeah. that like if we go to the depth? If is there a way to like you know when you play a video game, like there are video games that are massive, like massive, massive worlds that take forever to get to the end of, but eventually you can find the end of it. We what look if, at like No Man's Sky, where it's like all fake rendered. What if we were just a procedurally generated world that just so happened to like sustain life? What what if, okay? What well, what about this? What if <clears throat> Earth at some point? existed but earth has been destroyed and we're all part of a simulation to make us believe that we live in a time that happened like years ago like the matrix ben i don't know i haven't seen the matrix i know you haven't seen the matrix ben (laughs) no but like yeah but like what if what if we are like the matrix yeah it's like that that the simulation don't say it's like the matrix you don't know because you haven't seen it I'm, I'm saying what if it's like the you know basically a theory of like being a simulation but like you're in a simulation but a simulation of something that kind of has happened but earth was destroyed so like earth did exist it was destroyed and then we're just like a recreation of that earth and like i said i don't know if i'm quoting stuff right from the matrix because i haven't seen it so no copyright sorry <laughs> yeah you know you know what i'm saying yeah yeah and like humans did live on earth and they did leave earth and now they're recreating their existence to see how they can do it better are you saying that you're not a human bud well you already know i'm not i mean anyway, obviously but yeah you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but like but like wouldn't that be crazy if you just found, if you just found out that you were actually just a playing piece in future in like a past humans game mm-hmm. recreation of their life to see how they could save the planet yeah when they lost it the first time yeah wouldn't that be wild well i mean you know like there's a lot of people that like talk about how like what if like an npc in a video game became self-aware like free guy so excited about free guy yeah like in free guy and stuff but that's always like people have talked about that before and stuff so like if we are 
and other people are talking about us being in a simulation, wouldn't that make us self-aware? And wouldn't that like change things? Yeah, yeah. we'd be Unless learning we're not about NPCs. the world around us. What if we're all PCs, you know? What I'm saying yeah, what is what if like, we are all being controlled by the aliens? We are player playable. Like characters. what if, yeah, what if we're literally like designed to be like an experience of somebody else's life? Like what if they just take like people's memories and they like or like a person and they say, Hey, you're gonna be this person in the simulation. And so like we're just like there's somebody that stepped into our like lives when it was time for us to be like creative. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just it's just an interesting concept. Um but yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of scientists that like get freaked out about that because they say that as of, you know, the more they look into it, there's less and less argument to be made that we're not in a simulation. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess the interesting thing about the idea of us living in a simulation would be that it requires like an intelligent form to have created everything that we know right and that's why yeah that's why it brings me to the and that was where my idea came from was that we ourselves created it to see like how we could do better almost like a like yeah like a whole idea of like creating the world that you lived in previously to try to learn how we learn from our mistakes and see what we did wrong mm in some ways almost like a yeah. training simulation yeah yeah i mean this is it's awful but yeah <laughs> it is really but but like think about it like think, think about like if that was a thing like that'd be crazy right like it'd just be like like we had our chances as a, like a population of our planet and and then it got destroyed and then now we're just like trying to hope that we figured it out yeah i mean well, even, even if you if you have like the christian worldview and stuff you know like wouldn't that literally mean that we are basically just god simulation yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about it too, like, listen, this, and this is for like, you know, people, regardless of whether or not you believe what we believe and whether or not you believe in God and all that stuff, there's some interesting stuff. If you start reading the Bible, when Jesus starts talking about like, as a man thinks, so is he and talking about like putting on the mind of Christ, like there's constant like conversation in the Bible about the way that you think and the way that you perceive the world around you can affect things around you and affect the way that your life works and the way that things work. You know, even the whole concept of belief, like, what if the whole thing is like, hey, the way that you, you know, like, the, if it's like, um, the way I look at it is like, what if belief is like a beacon? So like, when the time comes for the simulation and everybody that has like, the correct beacon or the correct programming showing, they can take out of the reality that that simulation and put into like another reality, you know, to like, true reality, into true reality, you know, or yeah, something. They, I mean, yeah scary idea but i mean yeah. there's a lot of things like you know i was just reading here it is in um the the butterfly dream which is in um the zhang zhuang z it's a collection of anecdotes allegories parafables and fables um from like uh japan mm -hmm. and one of the concepts is this guy he's a philosopher wondering if he was a man who dreamed of being a butterfly or a butterfly dreaming of being a man mm -hmm. Hmm, you know, I mean, and this was, you know, and that's probably where a lot of that's probably <laughs> that's 18th it. century. That's yeah. probably stemming from a lot of beliefs of reincarnation as well. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but like the fact that, yeah, there are people that have been asking questions like that, you know, or even Plato's cave, like, mm -hmm. you know, the, I mean, the yeah. concept of that. And then what if we're living in that kind of reality? I feel and like people have been that out. contemplating these questions for a really long Beginning. time. Like, well, since yeah. I said like 18th century, I mean, that would be yeah. really... People have always, you know, yeah. questioned... Their place in the universe or their place yeah. in... Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I mean, I think that pretty much makes angels like game developers then, if that's the Could case. Be. Or they're they're the programmers. <laughs> you know, they're the ones that make sure that like, you know, oh, this thing is like not tweaked correctly and so they have to like yeah. go in and stuff, you know? Maybe they're uh, the beta testers. Right here. <laughs> yeah, we gotta, we gotta fix <laughs> that. Dude, we'll have to do a whole episode on like angels and demons and like people running into stuff. Yeah. That's that's crazy too. Yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff with that. Um, well, we I, still got to do a paranormal episode at some point because oh, well, Ben Ben keeps on teasing those. all these paranormal things he's paranormal dealt with, and yeah, and he just, I, you know, it's keeping me uh, keeping me on my toes a little bit, you know, yeah, at keep the edge of my seat. Feet, just, uh, I just I, I need to know. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, you need to experience it sort of through your eyes i don't think you want in your experience in your simulation it. yeah exactly <laughs> all from the mind computer mm -hmm. well i kind of like the um i kind of like some i was reading a lot about um there's a guy named uh David Kipling, he's from, he's an astronomer from Columbia University, who mm -hmm. says that like the idea that we're living in a simulation um, is like, there's like some big presumptions you have to make about the, the nature of reality. And, but he says, but if you really like break it down and, and getting into all of this, I mean, he talks about like, he breaks down the hypothesis and like matching them against each other and stuff. But he's like, really, if you look at it, the reason that it feels like it's 50, 50, or it could be 50, 50 is because like, the only way to it's either we are or we aren't so there isn't like that's why it's 50 50 that it's like not as simple as there's a 50 percent chance that we are in a simulation because of this evidence it's like we either are or we aren't and it's hard to even quantify the evidence that we weren't because how how could we even like prove that yeah. Like if you live in a simulation and something's watching you or has knows that you're programmed to be in a simulation, you becoming self-aware enough to know you're in a simulation, how are you going to prove that? Mm -hmm. Like you know, you could you could say, "Oh, I figured it out," but that could also just be part of the simulation too. It could yeah. all just be part of the the whole thing. Like Yeah. Which exactly. if, which was kind of an idea that was put forth in like the sequels mm -hmm. to the Matrix, which yeah, no those those the sequels are not great. They're not but there are some really heady ideas in there about the the idea of control and the idea of like maybe even the idea of of waking up to the simulation and waking up to yep. the world and trying to figure this out is all part of it. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Well, you know, but yeah, I don't know. Have you guys? You guys probably have not. You probably have only seen the movie um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, or you may haven't even seen the movies. I haven't, no, I haven't even seen. The movies. I remember. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I've never seen Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh I've heard a lot about it, gracious. but I've not. Oh, you guys are just didn't look at that. You cool. should read the books. Don't watch the movie. The movie's awful. The books are phenomenal. <laughs> but the interesting thing is the main the main hook in the book is that Earth gets destroyed like by these aliens that are trying to yeah. make like a super highway but the earth was actually a giant computer that was created as a simulation to find out what the answer to what the question to the light to life universe um and everything uh -huh. and they wanted to just like basically this ancient species built a supercomputer who could figure out what the answer to life the universe and everything was mm. and then like and the that's why he and humans were the key well, before that, it was like a giant computer, and the computer gave them the answer, and the answer was 42. And they were like, so what does that mean? They're like, well, I can't compute the question. I can compute the answer, but you actually have to ask the right question to gotcha. know what the answer even means. So then it created Earth, and like Earth was like, if I remember correctly, it was only like a few hours away from completing the final, like, like the final quote, like, um, the wow, question no, or whatever. The question, or... yeah. And so like right before it had the question, it got destroyed. Oh jeez, sounds about yeah. right. Yeah, sounds like so, Earth. Like, just like yeah, it's. But I I love the idea of like yeah, even like what if yeah, what if we're just like a computer equation that functions to like answer a question for a higher you know thing of being. But like, mm -hmm. what if they were just like, hey, if we create this, like we can watch the civilization start from zero and work its way up to where we are, and by watching that happen, we get to see what's the answer and if they destroy themselves like you know like it's like playing um it's like playing a game like age of empires or, or playing like you know one of those games where like yep. you just you build what you can and you send it out there and you hope it works and if it doesn't then you like restart the level and try again yeah, until right. it works we could be you know one of many or you know we could what if what if our reality was like a cloud safe like maybe that's why we have deja vu because we're remembering reliving the same things like you said like multiple realities mm -hmm. where they just Reset. rebooted it because they're like oh man they messed <laughs> that one up bad like <laughs> yeah, yeah. said it's like dave where was the last cloud save you know like yeah and if that's a, i mean like if we were going to run with that theory then that would kind of conflict with the whole butterfly effect theory how so because if like if you have if you're going like all the way back to like the beginning of time or something mm -hmm. and like restarting with a new save or whatever, then like everything's going to be completely different than it was the, the first time around completely. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. But what if they only reboot it from where we failed that one time? 
Like, what if there's a reality where, like, COVID was really, like, a terrible, awful virus that murdered, like, almost the entire human species? And then they were like, oh, like, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that one was a little bit too bit. rough. Uh. <laughs> yeah. But they're like, but we can't not have that exist. So here right. we are. And, like, now, like, you know, or, like, when we talked, we did a whole episode on the um, the Mandela effect. Yeah. All those weird tweaks. Maybe that's a reboot. But they're like, if we change like the slightest things like maybe that's the maybe the butterfly effect is like even more real like if mm. we change an, an an e to an a and it's now now it's no longer berenstein it's berenstein yeah but that tweak just enough in, of reality just so enough, that like just, a tiny little, just tiny enough little bit. that like that, there wasn't a, a world ending war yeah right that also gives ideas i mean that also lends kind of like a you know to the theory of the alternate realities too at the same yeah. time it's the same it's the same idea no it doesn't i mean it kind of is no it kind of is no i refuse yeah. i'm saying that we're just a cloud we're just all saved in the cloud and we just get rebooted <laughs> from where we were before and then mm-hmm. they fix things that's what the mandela effect is all about true yep yeah. yeah yeah exactly and what if aliens what if like our, our concept of aliens and all that stuff is their observational tools like it's like them running like a program to like assess an idea or assess a concept and so we just perceive it as like a thing of like hey like what was that like what was that thing that we saw but it was actually just them like tweaking stuff Mm -hmm. yeah i mean yeah i mean it's uh i guess you know you could say that's kind of like uh you could kind of tie ufos into that and stuff too as like i don't know like the developers coming down to check out the world or something or yeah uh i don't know to see how progress is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how it's going down here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um and speaking of speaking of aliens, um, I don't know, I know you guys might have saw that or not, but there was a, a recent thing about a a you uh, uh general in the British army or whatever. It claims he saw like an alien and actually like took a picture of an alien, like a real alien. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? You guys don't read the stuff that I send you? Oh, that's fine. Oh, did you send it? I don't know. I might have. I don't remember. I sent a lot of things. Well, I don't know. I usually I check when you send stuff, but I don't but remember you sent it. Maybe I didn't send it. Maybe I forgot to send it. No, well, maybe I forgot to send it to you. You guys, sent the taco yeah. relations thing. Well, that's a that's a whole other thing that we'll have to get into. <laughs> no, um, there was a there was a thing. I'm trying to find the article now, but yeah, there was a guy. Like, um, there's like a place in Britain, which is like the number two site, like Roswell, New Mexico is supposed to be like the number one site or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. but there's like, uh, another place in Britain that is claimed to be, um, like the second most active place for alien, like phenomena encounters or sightings. Really? Yep. And there was a, this guy, he was like a British, like a general or whatever that said, Hey, like I got a picture of one of them, sort of, and like it's obviously a super blurry picture, but they, he claims it's like the best one he could get of one of these things. Uh, Why are these pictures always blurry? That's what I don't understand. That's a really good question too. Like yeah. same thing with like Bigfoot and everything else. Like they're always like, oh, I got a picture of Bigfoot, but it's super blurry. You won't be able yeah. to make it out very well. <laughs> yeah. No, you're not wrong. It, it's annoying. Like yeah, we we live in a time where literally everyone has like an HD. Yeah, I have a 4K camera on the back of my like, phone. It shouldn't it shouldn't be that hard anymore. They're like, bro, we can't do capture it. stuff. But yeah, yeah. Well, you'd think so, but <laughs> you know, I mean, but it's what's weird though is like, what if you know us as like a species becoming more and more aware of aliens and stuff is because we're starting to wake up. Yeah, you know, maybe it's and, the convergence of the simulation with the aliens. Yeah, I don't know. And they're they're nice. ready to just party with us. You know? Yeah, they're just like, hey, we want to hang out and <laughs> chill, bro. <laughs> yeah. Wow, bro. That's what, that's what they want to do is like, you know, yeah. Simulation theory. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Pretty and uh, like, uh, I, I don't know why, but this scene always sticks in my mind. Uh, the movie is awful. The movie is absolutely terrible. But Indiana Jones, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, why the end of the movie the end of the movie when Kate Blanchett is like looking at the skull or whatever, and she's like trying to like understand everything, the whole universe and stuff. Mm-hmm. And 
she just like completely just like fries like she i think she explodes or i don't remember what happens but i just remember that she like blew up or something i think she melts yeah her head exploded and then she melted or something like that yeah so i was like she saw too much into the simulation yeah she understood it too much Yeah. yeah and it came back to bite her no you're not right i mean you're not wrong maybe george lucas is an alien and he gave that as kind of like a warning yeah maybe he was like guys this is what's up and that's why he did star wars too he was just trying to tell you guys what it's like you know yeah. apparently there's a thing like called the calvin photo <laughs> calvin photo or something like that okay. that is uh, one of the supposedly one of the best pictures ever made of a ufo or like ever taken of a ufo really like, this is like a solid picture and they claim not not be able to find it anymore. Or that and the, the the rumors that the uh, U.S. government has has it and won't release it. Really? Yeah, they either mm. lost it or it's classified. But I'm like, well, if you lost something like that, then that seems super sketchy. But if yeah. you like do have it and then you just released all this information and still won't release this picture, then that's even more like sketchy. Yeah, just release it at this point. Just yeah. stop. Just yeah. stop. Stop the teasing. Get it yeah, over stop with. messing with us just release yeah. it already yeah, the, it's called the, the give us that sweet release the, it's the it's the yeah the it's the U, it's a ufo dossier about calvin which is like north of scott north of glasgow in scotland it was spotted in 1990 1990 and it was supposed to be declassified on january 1st of 2020 but the ministry of defense blocked its release until 2072 with no explanation 2072 wow uh-huh Photographs were taken by two Perthshire hikers who watched the diamond-shaped metallic craft for 10 minutes before it shot up vertically out of sight. They also claimed to see military jets fly a series of low-level passes. Hmm. Evidence collected and held on to by officials includes the hikers' six-color snaps. And a redacted version of the file has been released, including just a blurred photocopy image. Hmm. And then, yeah, there's like a... there's uh, Somebody did like a colored version of the picture like a colorized version of the picture and if that's even like close to what it actually looked like this is a nuts photo really yeah oh yeah it's crazy are you looking at it yeah i'm looking at it right now but i just don't know you know how do you spell it calvin c-a-l-v-i-n-e calvin calvin i don't know okay yeah interesting what calvin photo yeah Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Dang. Yep. And that's then crazy, if you dude. look, there's like a black, black and white version of it. Yeah. That's like the redacted version that they did release. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. But like, wow. yeah, nobody's ever seen the like people have seen the actual photo, but nobody has like they've never released it to the public. Wow. But, huh. You know, and I once again, here we go, got stuck in talking about you know freaking aliens and freaking aliens again yeah. and stuff. But <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Um, interesting yeah it's just it puts us in a, in a weird perspective i mean here we are talking about you know simulation and stuff and if that's the case and if reality isn't what we think it is and aliens are just monitoring things you know maybe we can't trust anything <laughs> yeah. maybe it's that's all definitely fake. the takeaway here that maybe, should be our takeaway. maybe ben is uh is a simulation too maybe like ben doesn't really exist yeah which is why he keeps making up this wife that doesn't <clears throat> exist what? Okay. Maybe uh, the uh, Megatherium is just like something. You know, okay, God. now that you're about to slander my boy, I gotta go now. We figured <laughs> it out. We caught him. We caught his ass. He's been trying to get us on this Megatherium thing for years. <laughs> He's trying to lead us because he knows if we accept that the Megatherium is real, that we'll forget about the simulation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he just throws it out there every once in a while. We start to get too close to <laughs> the truth. It's like yeah. Megatherium. <laughs> what about this giant sloth? Listen, guys, if we all of a sudden disappear, it's Ben's fault. Yeah. If we just stop doing the podcast and you don't hear anything from us, Ben did it. It's Ben. Come on, us. We're here for a reason. (laughs) So, with all that being said, simulation theory, all that good stuff. Aliens again. Deja vu. Aliens again. Megatheriums. Well, not not that. (laughs) Hey, you brought it up. What is the animal of the week? It's my animal of the week. What well, is the, what is the animal of the week? The animal of the week. Yeah, you said yeah. that you had one. You wanted to bring it up, so I did. 
I said yeah. that last week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, well, you know what we're going to talk about, though? <laughs> I don't know. We're, if we're going to have an animal of the week. Planet. No, did, did I really? Bears. No, I'm not giving a shout out to the Qual Bears. You know what? <laughs> we're gonna do if we're gonna do Animal of the Week, it's gonna be the Cassowary. Cassowary. It's yeah, it's a freaking bird. Oh, oh dude, the Cassowary is so scary, yeah. dude. That it's thing will like, slice your throat. Oh my I god, Ben, I'm talking ago, about the Animal of the Week. Ago. Go get your own damn Animal of the Week. Yeah. It's like a, it's, it's like a smaller <laughs> version of an emu, but it's like yeah. super colorful. And these things are the meanest things ever. They're yeah. like super, super, super shy until you get near them, and then they just go bananas. Mm-hmm. They have huge um, claws. They have, yeah, yeah, huge claws, and they're like, they think that they might be ancestors of the Velociraptor. Yeah, they kind of got the same weird like thing on its head. Not uh, more like an Oviraptor than a Velociraptor, but yeah. Oh, yeah, good. It, it's a raptor. It it's got that same like crest raptor. crest thing on its head. You're a crest. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like really colorful too. Like there's yeah. a bunch of blue and red on it and stuff. Yeah. So. These things are. But those, they're different. dangerous, right? Like they'll. Yeah, yeah dude. They'll, they're extremely territorial, too, so they'll, like, try to freaking murder you if you come near them. Yep. During yeah. World War II, American Australian troops were stationed in New Guinea. We warned to steer clear of them because they would just, like, yeah. The inner mm-hmm. second of the three toes is fitted with a long, straight, murderous nail, which can mm-hmm. sever an arm or eviscerate an abdomen with ease. Oh, and there are many records of natives being killed by that bird. Yep. Wow. They will slice throats and slit your stomach open and stuff. It's crazy. They yep. can jump five feet off the ground as well. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and they can run up to 30 miles per hour. Yeah, they're terrifying. So, like, yeah. If you see a cassowary, you're dead. dead. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. basically. (laughs) Yeah, well, even here, like, this is a, I mean, it was a dog, which is poor doggy. But, like, 1995, a dog got kicked by one, but it didn't sever anything. It didn't, like, but the the kick was hard enough to cause an intestinal rupture. Wow. Another death, one of the most recent deaths from a human, uh, human death from a cassowary was recorded in 2019 in Florida. Of course, Florida. The bird's owner, a 75 year old man who had raised the animal, was clawed to death after he fell on the ground. Dang. Cassowaries. It's crazy. And once again, just like all these other crazy creatures, it comes from Australia, of course. Yep. So. Figure that one out. <laughs> but are also new suggestions good. of the week? Because I have a suggestion of the week. Okay, go for it. Go check out the beta for New Worlds. It's an Amazon created MMO. It's it looks promising. Could be something real big. I don't know. Yeah. Interesting art direction. It's gorgeous. As long as you don't have a, a 3090 um, graphics card, because apparently if you have one of those, it's going to kill your graphics card. It's kind of like a cross between The Witcher and Valheim. <laughs> What's your suggestion for this week, Ben? Well, my suggestion for this week is watch the Dune trailer that by the time this podcast is released, will be out. Yes. yes. Get freaking hyped for Dune. Denis. Let's go. Let's go, Denis. Yes. Yes, Denis. New trailer tomorrow. Um, but by the time this comes out, we'll have all seen it. So mm-hmm. let's freaking go. Get hyped for Dune, ladies and gentlemen. I do have things. to say, I want to go on record as saying Ben was the one talking about New World before we started this podcast. <laughs> and I had to take the opportunity to steal his thunder. <laughs> and I am all about it. <laughs> My recommendation for the week is New World. Better Call Saul. Oh! Um, I've been watching through the, the show. I am already like on season three, so I've been really enjoying the heck out of it. And I just started it a couple of weeks ago. Mm, and uh, I really like the show a lot. If you are a fan of Breaking Bad, you need to watch uh, Better Call Saul. It is Neat. a great, uh, it's not even necessarily a prequel to Breaking Bad. It's more about like the prequel of Saul Goodman from Breaking Bad. And it's great. The writing is fantastic. Not as good as Breaking Bad, but it's it's definitely up there. It's a really good show. And I highly recommend it. So beautiful. Boom. There you nice. go. Nice. So with that being said, that's going to be the episode for this week. We hope you guys enjoyed. Let us know what you think of the comments. If you're watching us on YouTube and if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platform, make sure that you leave a review. It would really mean a lot to us. Thank you so much, everyone. And we will talk to you all next week. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.